Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today we are doing a, uh, a fun video. One that doesn't happen too often because typically when I get like a haul in, uh, it's very sporadic, and especially with the shipping the way it has been lately, um, you know, things are very spaced out, and I don't have the patience to store up a, a large haul. But in this instance, um, it just kind of worked out, and so here we are. We're doing a, a haul video. Now these were from various sources. I think some were from Instagram, none from eBay this time. Um, I have no local comic shops to visit, but uh, I think the other one was from Mercari or something like that. But anyways, first up, let's let's just dive right in. This is something that really won't fit in with my normal content, but I have to show it off because I'm super excited to have it. This right here, let me just zoom out just a tad. Um, you might recognize this as a U.S. military helmet. I got this off of Mercari, and uh, I have a small, slowly growing World War I and World War II uh, military collection, mainly based around the items that I have from my two grandfathers who uh, w both served in World War II, and so this is going to go with that collection. It's going to go on display. So I'll give you guys a quick background of what this is. This is a U.S. military M1 style helmet. This style of helmet would have seen service from World War II through Korea, through Vietnam, and then all the way up into uh, the 70s, even the 80s, I think. And then they finally phased it out into like Kevlar helmets and things like that. And um, yeah, so the cool thing with this helmet is there's a seam right here, and it's called a front seam helmet because later helmets have a seam back here. Now what that seam means is that this helmet was made around 1943 through 1944, so it's a World War II helmet. If the helmet doesn't have the front seam, there's no way to confidently say when it was manufactured. So it could have been a World War II helmet, it could have been a Korean War helmet or a Vietnam War helmet. Still an incredible piece of history, but because I really am uh, focused on the history of World War II, I wanted a helmet that could be dated to that time period. The thing is with this helmet, it's kind of a curiosity. It's been fitted with modern straps. These straps are more Vietnam era, and the liner is also a Vietnam era liner. So my theory is with this helmet that it was used in World War II, but then also saw service in Vietnam. Um, just was, you know, updated. They updated the straps and the liner so it was more comfortable for the soldiers. I could be wrong. It could just be a helmet that was left over. It wasn't used in World War II and they just fitted it, you know, out for Vietnam or sometime in that era around the 60s or 70s. Either way, it's a really nice piece. I'm happy to have it in my collection. I will be cleaning this helmet up a little bit, you know, removing the scotch tape and any residue that's left over. It's definitely not original. Um, I also don't think that this dent is anything, um, this is probably like a storage dent, you know, someone dropped something on it. It doesn't look to be anything that's like uh, combat damage or anything like that. But I just want to show this off because I don't really talk about my military collection, but this helmet is a really, really excellent piece, and I'm very, very happy to have it as part of that collection. It will make a really cool centerpiece, I think. And really, no matter what era this helmet is from, it is still an important piece of history, and uh, I, I still care for it as such. You know, it's still an incredible piece to have in my collection. Just had to show it off on here and, you know, tell you guys a little bit about its history. Probably most of you don't care, and you're waiting for me to show off some toys. So uh, let's get on with that. So first up we have this lot of I think six action figures and most of them are all the same action figure. I got a really exceptionally good deal on these. We will start with this one, the 41st Elite Landing Platform Commander. This is one of my all-time favorite clone units. Now, if you guys have, you know, been watching the channel for any amount of time, you might be aware that I am currently trying to army build this unit, the 41st landing platform unit with the gray markings. And so this is a great, great addition to the collection. Um, I think I've already got two of this guy. So I'll probably take off his comma and uh, shoulder pauldron, give him the standard gray belt, and just make him a trooper. But still, it's good to have another one of these for sure. You can never have too many commanders, and this is one of my favorite designs in this particular mold. I guess this is like the Commander Thyre mold, first seen with uh, Commander Thyre in the Ordi 66 pack, or maybe like the 327th. I don't know which came first, but it's basically that 327th Trooper slash Commander Thyre mold. You have the comma, the pauldron, the removable helmet, and it's awesome. 
The only weird thing that I've ever noticed with this figure is these red markings. I don't know if that's supposed to be blood or something. I don't know. You know, I really just don't know what that's supposed to be, but hey, it, it's, it's cool. Either way, it's fine. Doesn't bother me. This one has a really heavy wash on the legs, you'll see. It kind of almost makes it look like it's yellowed. Even on the torso, it's got this very heavy, like, wash. I haven't seen that on this figure before, but uh, it's not yellowed that I can tell. I think it's honestly just the wash, because, like, right there, that's, that's the plastic. That's white plastic. But then where the wash is, it just looks yellow. I don't know if I like that. It's just one of those variations, you know, when these are manufactured, they're all kind of hand washed or like hand brushed on and so you'll get weird variations like that and next up we have this guy or rather five of this guy um there's like eight bucks a piece on these and so i was just like man i I'm not, I, I can't i can't pass that up i've never actually had this particular version of the tartakovsky clones um i have the arc trooper or fordo but I've never had the Phase 2 or Phase 1 Clone Troopers, and since I want to complete the Tartakovsky line, I had to get at least one of these, and since he had so many, the, the seller had so many of these, I was like, well, I'll get a couple, I'll get all of them, and um, some I'll leave as just plain, and some I will get and maybe paint, I don't know. If I get the Phase 2 Commander Cody, which I'm still looking for, I need to get that, um, if I get the Phase 2 Commander Cody, maybe I'll make two of these into, like, a 212th Clone Trooper in the Tartakovsky style. I'm not entirely sure, but these guys are awesome. They're great to see in person. You know, they're, they're statues. There's not a lot of articulation, just the arms and the head, but... Or, and, the, and the waist, but they're just cool. Like, these look great on a shelf, and you really can't have too many of them because you can just line them all up and just look how cool they look. They look so cool. I'm just going to really quick set the last few of these up so that they will look good maybe in the thumbnail. I won't put him on a base just to save some room because these bases are clunky. Um, not McClunky, but just clunky, you know. But they are cool. I always appreciate that these uh, Tartakovsky Clone Wars figures came with these really cool bases. Um, but I don't always have room to display them that way, so the nice thing with them being kind of statues is that they will stand up on their own pretty easily. There, There's not a lot of worry there that they will just tumble over at random, unless you bump into them like that. And finally from this lot, we have the other clone trooper that I'm currently trying to army build, and that is the Order 66 Kashyyyk Trooper. These guys are another one of my all-time favorite clone troopers. I think that they rank pretty closely with the 41st Landing Platform clone trooper in this antenna mold. They just, they're so cool. The green visor, the camouflage, the two-tone. This is like the third one that I have now, and they fit in really well with the really rare bogey squad commander. Um, if you watch that video where I unboxed it, you kind of know what I'm talking about, or, you know, if you know the, the line, you know what I'm talking about. But these guys just fit in really well with him, so I've been trying to army build them for toy photos and for my collection, so hopefully I can get a few dozen more of these guys, probably not that many, but I'm trying to pick them up as often as I can when I find them for a good price, just to have a nice army of these guys. You know, I might make some of them into officers too, give them some pauldrons and things like that. I typically will do that when I try to army build a specific clone unit, like I'm doing that with the 41st landing platform clones. I have some of them as officers with little belts and things like that. This one, I'll probably do the same once I get more of these particular figures. So that is the first haul, and I'm really happy with that. These Tartakovsky clones I've been wanting to get for a long time, so I'm really, really grateful to have gotten them for such a good price. These two are great army builders, so I'm always happy to get more of those. And this next package, I gotta say, I don't remember what this is. I do know that it is from 118 Archive. He's over on Instagram. I think he's got a website too. He archives every 118th scale figure that comes out. I don't know if he does every, but he's got an expansive collection and archive of different 118 scale um, action figures. And that's, that's what these are. These are roughly 118 scale. So he's got a very vast collection and he had a sale over on his Instagram a while ago. And I, uh, I picked up some figures, and I can only remember one of them, but I know I've got, I've got a decent number of figures in here, but let's open it up and see what it is. Okay. 
First up is Saw Gerrera. Now you might be saying like, ooh, why would you buy a 5 POA figure? And ordinarily you'd be right, but this is Saw Gerrera. And I was a huge fan of the movie. I was a huge fan of um, Rogue One. And I felt like the figures were underserved. Like, you got a few of them, but most of them were 5 POA. Very few were in the TVC line. And with us getting Sharut Mwe now in the TVC line, I figured I gotta, I gotta complete the 5 POA line. So I'm gonna try and track down every single Rogue One 5 POA action figure. It's not gonna be easy, but I think most of them are still fairly cheap. So, hey, if you have any, you can shoot me a DM and... Maybe we can work something out, because I am I loved the movie. I thought it was really good, and I mean, again, I know this is 5 POA, but just look at all the amazing detail that they packed into this figure. They really should have gone all the way and made it into a TVC figure, but they didn't, and, you know, I guess I'm just as happy to have this sitting on my shelf as a, as a TVC figure. It's, it's really cool, and I can't wait to try and track down the rest of the line, just to, just to have, like, one shelf that will be a movie-related shelf. The only two lines that I think I will ever try to complete are the Rogue One 5 POA and the Tartakovsky line. I think any other one is just too hard to track down everything for, and it's, you know, I don't really like all the figures in the lines. These two, I think I like all the figures well enough to actually, you know, build up a collection of them to complete the line. Next up, we got this guy, the Ralph McQuarrie Rebel Trooper concept art figure. That was a mouthful. I've always really liked the concept art characters. I thought they were just really interesting to kind of see where, you know, all the Star Wars designs originated. And this one is just, it's cool. It's kind of 70s sci-fi. It's its very unique looking. And yeah, this is just a cool action figure. It's got some early airbrush there. It's got a holster, a very unique blaster pistol. It looks so cool. And honestly, I don't know if I'll ever use this as a rogue rebel trooper or anything like that, but I think if I can get a couple more of these, they will fit in as security guards on my city that I'm working on building, my little diorama city. I just think that that would kind of fit as a cool piece of lore. These guys are just the security guards for the the city that I'm designing, and yeah, that that's all there is to say about it. These guys are cool. Kind of a Darth Vader-esque like, neck piece of armor there, and then this piece, which... This piece is very reminiscent, obviously, of like where they got the inspiration for the current Rebel Trooper helmet. But this piece just plops right there, and he looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, you could it, some might say it's goofy, but honestly, I just dig that 1970s vintage look. This is just like the classic Star Trek, uh, Doctor Who kind of cheap sci-fi looking design. And the undersuit, the colors, it just... It all comes together into this really cool piece, so happy to finally have one of those, and that might be something that I don't exactly army build, but I definitely wouldn't complain if I had two or three of them, you know, as like a security force. Speaking of concept figures, I had to pick up this one too. Um, this is the concept R2-D2 with all of his wacky arms and limbs all flailing and flopping about. Um, it's just, it's a cool design. I've seen this in a lot of uh, photos from people. Like, uh, Empire Toy Works has used this in some of his photos, and I've always looked at this as, like, the perfect steampunk, like, underworld-style R2-D2. I wish we had seen something like this in the movie. Not as R2-D2, but, like, as a cobbled-together, like, scrap droid or something like that. But just pick this one up because the design is so cool. It's kind of just steampunky and weird and wacky. I love the, the arms that he has that you can kind of pop out on his chest and on his head. So, yeah, that's another concept one that I picked up. It's also going to fit in pretty well with my weird city, hopefully. And uh, I just, I don't know, I can't get over how good that looks, like with the goofy arms and everything. It's a cool figure. The concept line is a really interesting and unique line that they created. I'm glad that they did. Like, it just pays so so much homage to the original artwork, and you can really see where, like, conceptually these characters evolved from the early sketches all the way to what we currently have as, like, the canon characters. And finally for this haul, we have the Jedi who lived too shortly, or too briefly? I don't know. We saw him for, like, three seconds on screen, and then he died from Jango Fett blasting him in the chest. And then he fell, and he died, and it, that was the end of Coleman Trevor. 
but I actually didn't know that they made this figure. This is an early TVC figure, I believe, and so it's got really good articulation, you know, arms, legs, knees, ankles. It's not one of those, like, Attack of the Clones figures where he's kind of pre-posed. I think this is the second Coleman Trevor figure that they ever made. This is by far the superior definitive version, I feel. And so, yeah, again, really happy to have it. I don't typically collect Jedi. I mean, I do if I can find a good looking one and, you know, one that's a, a good sculpt and everything. But, man, Coleman Trevor was one of my favorites growing up. And so to see him realized in a good articulated action figure form... I couldn't pass it up. So I picked it up, and uh, yeah, that's the last piece of this haul. I used to know as a kid um, what uh, what the dinosaur was that kind of looked like him. Like, there's a dinosaur, and I can't remember its name, that has uh, the the thing that goes, like, back on its head. And I was always, I always called this guy by that name. Like, it was that dinosaur name guy. So, um, if I can find it, the name of the dinosaur, it'll go up on screen right here, just, just above my hand right there. Yep, right there. Um, if I can't find it, then I will put a meme of a cat. There we go. You, you now know what I do not know while filming this video. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's what the haul was, and I can't really fit the helmet in the frame, but you can just imagine that there's also a big, you know, World War II helmet sitting back there. But yeah, this was pretty awesome. I was happy to get all these in the mail. And it did take a while for all these to get in. Unfortunately, mail in my area is super, super delayed. But hey, I understand. I get it. It's okay. Not a big deal. It just teaches me to be more patient. But I was I was very impatient to get my to get my hands on these figures, uh, especially the clone troopers. They are just awesome. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching and hopefully being entertained by this little haul video. Uh, down in the description, you can find links to my social media, my Facebook, my Instagram, uh, my Tea Spring Tea Public. I forget which one it is. It's one of those two things that I just said. You can also find my P.O. Box address down there. If you send anything in, I will unbox it live on YouTube. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I will be sure to catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.